Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Twilio command line interface, Twilio CLI, which is brand new, just released this week at the Twilio Signal conference that uh, I just got back from last night. So all of this stuff is brand new. But before you go any further, take a look at the description in this video to make sure that there isn't an, an updated version of this tutorial. This stuff changes super fast. And if there is an updated version, you'll see a link in the description to that version. And so follow that link if you see it. With that, um, like I said, this stuff is brand new. And I, I was looking at the documentation last week, uh, and uh, but not all of the um, endpoints were available. The, the CLI covers the entire API, the Twilio API surface area. So there's a lot of stuff in it. But what I was most interested in was the, uh, the functions. I've done a couple of tutorials uh, on Twilio functions. And um, up until this point, the way that you would work with functions was exclusively through the web console, which is nice for getting something done quickly if it's something simple. But if you're doing something more complex, uh, not ideal at all. And that's where the, um, the CLI comes in. And uh, so let's, um, yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, for starters, there is uh, probably some conceptual stuff that makes sense. So I'll, I'll talk about that real quickly, and then we'll talk about like installing the, uh, the, the CLI and setting it up, and then we'll walk through a couple of quick examples. Um, well, actually, why don't we start with installing it first? It's really simple. It's an NPM module that you can install globally. So uh, NPM install Twilio-CLI-G. And I've done that, and I also installed this plugin. So the CLI supports plugins, which I really like. I'm going to look at um i've got a couple of ideas for plugins so i'm gonna look at that in more detail and we'll cover that when i get to that at some point in the uh the future but there's a a, a plugin for called the plugin dash serverless uh which is for working with the uh functions and so i've installed that also from what i can tell reading through the serverless toolkit documentation it's a wrapper for some other commands that exist under the uh the API command, which we'll take a look at in just a second, but it just kind of simplifies things. And so my starting point is the Twilio CLI is installed and the uh, this plugin for the serverless is also installed. And again, I used the uh, NPM to install it, but I think you can also use Homebrew, I think I saw somewhere if you're on a Mac. And uh, you can. Uh, it's also supported for uh, Windows and Linux as well. So. Um, real quick, conceptually, like high level, you you start with a service, and a service is the container for environments. And environments uh, would be like dev, uh, staging, production. And what's really cool is you can very easily move from one environment to the other environment. And again, I'll show you that in just a second. And then within each one of the environments, you have uh, one or more functions. And this, again, I really like because um, you can sort of bundle everything together that logically goes together for a project or an app or something like that and deploy it, build it and deploy it all at once. Um, really easy to, to work with. You, uh, you start from the command line here and once uh, everything is installed, you'll have the, uh, the Twilio command and then the commands for the CLI uh, get listed in the, uh, the help here. And so pretty much everything is under this uh, this API command here. But when you install the plugin, the serverless plugin, you get this serverless command, which we're going to start with here. And so um, Twilio serverless like this. And the um, serverless command has activate, deploy, init, list, new, and start in it. So the one that you're going to begin with is init. And init. Uh, serverless init data lab init is going to initialize a new local serverless project so when you do that it's going to create a directory and some uh, scaffolding some files boilerplate files and and code uh, boilerplate code to get started with so that's what's happening right now it's installing um, the dependencies and when this is finished up, uh, we can take a look at what it has pulled down for us. So this is the folder that it's created here. And in that folder, we've got some uh, sample code, this hello world uh, 
JS file is, is what we're going to take a look at. But before we do uh, something else that I think is really cool, um, change into your local project folder. And then from there, you can go npm uh, start. And this is going to run a local server that allows you to um, test your code locally. And I love this, my favorite first feature. So um, got a local web server running now with uh, hello world, which is coming from this hello world function here. So if I change this to hello from data lab and save it and go over here and refresh, there you go. So I can do all of my um, function development locally. And I absolutely love that. That is super cool. And then when I'm done building locally, I can uh, just stop my local server here and use the, where is it, Twilio, I think it's deploy, the serverless deploy command. Uh, yep, that is, I remembered correctly. And this is going to push it out to my um, account, like public, publicly. And by default, it pushes it out to a, uh, an environment called dev. So now once it's finished deploying here, we can go and check out this link here uh, to see the, uh, the public version of it. So you can see now um, up here, now we're out in the, uh, in the wild on a publicly accessible endpoint. And the endpoint is created using the um, project name and then uh, the environment or service name, I guess that would be. And then um, I, I guess that's probably a random number maybe. And then the, uh, the environment. So in, by default, as I mentioned, it goes into the dev environment. And so you can do all of your um, coding locally, push it out to dev and do your public testing or your development testing out there. And then when you're ready, you can use, I'm going to just get rid of this, the serverless activate command. And that's going to move uh, or enable you to move your uh, environment from like dev to staging to production. So it makes it really, really uh, nice. And let's see, what else do we want to take a look at here? Um, we're not, I won't do that now because I don't have other environments set up, but I'll do like a uh, list is going to list the um the services that uh, are out there. And the other thing that I had to dig around a little bit for, um, oh, this new, actually this is, This is cool. This lets you pick a template for a function that um, uh, is, uh, is, is really nice. So if you want a starting point, and this I'm sure will grow, but there's quite a few of them in here already. So I'll just do a, a blank one. Um, Okay, and now I have sample in my blank function here. And if I go uh, npm start, and then I can go to my new function, which I've got nothing in there, but it's just a blank. If I go code that, I can return something interesting. Hello world, and then go over here. And there we go. So that is uh, pretty simple. And the last thing, and then we'll call it a wrap for this, that I had to dig a little bit for, um, actually two, two points that uh, I want to make before wrapping it up. One is that uh, I, I sort of imagined that once I deployed this, I would be able to go out and find it in my web console. And right now you can't, that is clear in the documentation, but I was fumbling around with this before reading through uh, all of the documentation. 
But right now, um, the if you create a function in the web console, you won't see that when you use list in the CLI or from the API and vice versa. So if you create one using the API, you're not gonna see that in the web console. I'm sure that's just because it's early days and we'll see parity on that at, at some point down the road. But right now, uh, that is um, something to note. And then the last thing is, oh, okay, getting rid of this. Uh, so I was trying to figure out how to delete it and it, uh, it's, not in the, um, it's not in the serverless plugin. But if the documentation is really good, so uh, if you go to the service under the API reference um, and then find delete a service in there, and then there's uh, an example for the, the CLI, and the other SDKs as well, but here we go. Uh, API serverless v1 services remove, and, and then it's dash s SID. And then you find the SID for the service, which is up here somewhere. Yeah. And paste that in. And that's going to remove it. And that is it for this. There's a lot more. Uh, I'm going to be digging in deeper and I'll follow this up with what I find as I get uh, deeper into it. But hopefully that was helpful. A quick first look. If you have any comments or questions, you can read, uh, leave those and I'll respond to them just as quickly as I can. If you found this valuable, check out youtube.com slash Dabalab. There are over 120 other uh, tutorials um, on building bots and digital assistants and this kind of stuff using uh, Twilio and other platforms. And if you did like this video, please like it on YouTube. Thank you so much.